Hi, this is Philip Engel at XBRL US, and today I'm going to walk through iXBRL. iXBRL is inline XBRL, and it is a technology to embed XBRL information in other documents and is most commonly used with HTML. This combines the rendering power of HTML, which allows you to create uh, visually appealing documents, with the data centric qualities of XBRL. And this is really the focus of iXBRL to use the existing rendering powers in other technologies, and in this case HTML, and combine it with the qualities of tagging data to make it easier to process and systematically analyze data of XBRL. To show the difference between XBRL and iXBRL, I'm going to look at the set of files that are used in a normal uh, filing with the SEC. So here in a, in a regular filing, you normally have this combination of files. You have an HTML document of the filing, which is used uh, by people to look at the filing and to read the data. But it's not easy to process systematically to extract the information. So along with the filing is an XBRL instance document, and it's supporting company extension taxonomy schema with its associated link bases, presentation, calculation, definition, and labels. In an iXBRL, scenario, the HTML document and the XBRL instance document would be combined into a single iXBRL file. It is important to note here that there really is no change on the taxonomy side of this. So the taxonomy schema and its associated link bases stay the same and there's no change in the process of producing iXBRL uh, on the taxonomy side. So iXBRL is really a different way of presenting the instance data. Since an iXBRL document is an HTML document, it can be rendered in a browser. And the extra information in the document identifying the XBRL components are essentially ignored by the browser when it's rendered. I'm going to show you an example. And the first one I'm going to show is an Internet Explorer. And this is an iXBRL document taken from uh, a sample from the IFRS. And here we're looking at a set of financial statements. And it's being rendered exactly according to the way it's rendered in regular HTML. And notice because it's HTML, it can have pictures at the top, or and it's got formatting and colors. And all of this is handled by the HTML component. But underneath this, the values in this document, such as this 6,863,545, is has additional markup in it to identify that it's an XBRL data fact. And I just want to show you that uh, this is Internet Explorer, if I look at it in another browser, this one is Chrome, I'm seeing the same rendering. And here also is a rendering in Firefox. This is where iXBRL differs from regular XBRL. So in regular XBRL, if I look at a, a filing, and here I pulled up a filing, uh, a random filing from the SEC website. This one is for Dell and it's a 10K. This is a rendering of the balance sheet. And it's based on the normal XBRL that was part of this filing. If I look at this in another tool, let's see, here is the same filing in another tool, an XBRL tool. And I get all the same information, and I'll even get it. Uh, some of the rendering will be identical. For instance, the ordering of the concepts, the reporting concepts on the left, will be the same here as it is in the SEC's renderer, because they're using information in the taxonomy extension that determines the order of how these concepts should be presented. But other aspects of the rendering are different. For example, the choice of fonts that are used, when concepts are bold and when they're not, the ordering of the years that are displayed across, and it really even in the organization. In fact, in this tool, I can kind of pivot the data around. So it's showing me the same data, but pivoted where I put the uh, period into the row structure on the left. Right. So the rendering engines have a lot of leeway in how they present these, these financial information. So let's look very quickly at the actual underlying files between an XBRL instance document and an iXBRL document. So, so here is a XBRL instance document. And we're going to look at the, this first revenue number. So this was the revenue number. It showed us 6,863,545 in the iXBRL document. But when we were looking at that iXBRL document, right, 
we see the, the 6,863,545, but we also see in the document that this is in euros and it's in thousands, right? So the underlying XBRL actually shows this as 6,863,545,000. And you notice in the underlying XBRL, there are the extra three zeros because all numbers in XBRL are shown in their full value. And also note that in the XBRL, there's no comma separators. And in this case, there's no decimal point because there's no decimal places after the number. In the IXBRL, and this is the actual IX, uh, IXBRL file that we were just looking at, the number is shown as you want to have it displayed. It is 6,863,545 without the extra zeros making it into billions because that information is elsewhere in the document that says it's in euros and it's in thousands. Right. And it's all enclosed in this special IXBRL tag called, this is an IXBRL non-fraction tag. And this contains extra information about how to translate this number with the commas and the fact that it's missing the zeros, how to translate like this back into the actual XBRL value. And in this case, it's showing me that the scale is 3, which means it's in thousands. Basically add 3 extra zeros. And that it's formatted in a format that's a number with a comma and a dot. So this is a number where the comma is used as uh, triad separators and a dot is used as a decimal separator. So with this information, this number can be converted to the number representation that it would be in the regular XBRL. Because the IXBRL document contains this extra markup, an XBRL instance is actually generated from the IXBRL. And to show this, I am going to use the uh, Firefox browser. And this Firefox browser I'm using actually has a add-in for working with uh, inline XBRL documents. And so it's showing me the uh, sample document we've been looking at. And there's an option here to extract the XBRL. And so what it's going to do is it's going to take the IXBRL markup that's in this HTML and generate the XBRL document. And you can see here on the left now, but what I have is just the raw XBRL. And here, my first revenue number is that revenue number that's been converted from the IXBRL, where it was represented with the commas, uh, to the full value represented in XBRL and with the proper XBRL tagging. I want to highlight a couple of nice features of IXBRL. And this first one is, when you're looking at the HTML rendering of the IXBRL document, uh, we, we can see all the nice formatting, which is what we get with IXBRL. But with a tool that understands the IXBRL components of it, you can actually see which portions of this have been marked up with the IXBRL. And here in this tool, this is the Firefox add-in, I've asked to highlight the IXBRL information. And so now in the document, I can see all the pieces of this document that actually have uh, XBRL fact associated with it. Now, in this tool, if I turn on the inspect element, I can show the IXBRL markup that's associated with that particular number. And I have the same document open in another tool. And in this one, it has a similar feature. I can do highlighting of the IXBRL information, but in this tool, when I click on the number on the right hand side, I actually get what it would look like, or the information that it would look like in the XBRL version of the document. So here it's actually showing me the full value after conversion. It's uh, showing me the currency associated with it, uh, the concept that's uh, associated with this. So this actually shows me what this number and how it would look in the XBRL. What's nice about this is that you can actually look at the, your HTML version of a filing and at the same time understand how the different parts of that filing and which numbers in this filing will be converted to the XBRL. Another feature of IXBRL is really that because the XBRL information and the HTML document are in a single document, there's really only a single source for most of the numbers. And that is for this example where we have the uh, 6,863,545,000. Uh, there's really just one representation in the IXBRL document, and that was the 6,863,545, right, with the additional IXBRL markup to indicate that it's really in thousands and how to understand the commas. 
That means if I go and change that number in the underlying document, it not only changes it in the way it's displayed, but when I generate the XBRL document from it, the number is changed there as well. So there's a single source. This means I don't have to worry about syncing my HTML document with my XBRL document. So one question is, how does preparing iXBRL document compare to traditional XBRL documents? And if we go back to the list of files that are sent with a filing with the SEC, we have the HTML document, the XBRL instance, and then the company extension, which includes the taxonomy schema, and then the presentation calculation label and definition link basis. In an iXBRL world, the HTML and the XBRL instance document are really merged into a single iXBRL document. And so the filing itself is actually a little bit simpler because there's one less document to file. The other advantage to this is that during the filing process, if there are changes to some of your numbers or some of the text in your filing, you don't have to worry about how to keep that in sync between your HTML and your XBRL instance document because these are essentially one document and within the document there's really just one source for each of these values. So you make that one change to the original source. So if you make a change to the uh, number, it is om automatically reflected in the XBRL. On the consuming side, there's actually very little change. Today, currently, information consumers take the XBRL files, they process them, and, and perform their analysis. In an iXBRL world, they would take the iXBRL file, and they'd add this one extra step to generate the XBRL instance from it, and then go through the same process that they currently do. So there's very little extra work on the data consumption side. I hope this quick review of iXBRL has been helpful. For more information, you can send us comments or questions at comments at xbrl.us, and please visit our website at xbrl.us. Thank you very much.